Hello. Uh, welcome to uh, Brewster High School. We're in the uh, Innovation Learning Center, which is our completely renovated um, uh, 21st century um, environment that uh, our students can uh, spend their time in, uh, working together, um, relaxing, um, you know, completing projects and so forth. It's an absolutely amazing uh, space. And it's uh, befitting that we would be having a conversation in this space about um, what we're, what we're calling success skills, these 21st century skills. Like it's a little, you know, kind of like, um, almost like outdated to refer to the skills as, as 21st century skills because we are, after all, 18 years into the 21st century, right? So we flipped our conversations and language to refer to them as, as success skills. Um, this is, well, before we get into talking about those, why don't we introduce ourselves and sort of give you a little context for you know, of the collection of, uh, of our uh, distinguished uh, uh, students here. Oh, so hi, um, I'm Aaron Learn. I'm a junior here at Brewster High School. Um, we're all part of a um, kind of student government type situation called Democratic Congress. Other schools refer to it as student body. Um, we kind of act as the bridge between the students and the administration. So we have meetings often with Mrs. Sullivan here and Dr. Henning, uh, as well as Mrs. Horler. Um, and work with the clubs, other student governments, just to make sure the school's running smoothly and all students' voices are heard. And I'm the vice president. Hi, I am Julia Villani. I'm a senior at Brewster High School, and I'm the president of Democratic Congress. Uh, this would be my second year working in Democratic Congress, and we have done uh, things from conventions to holding you know, an ice cream social for the new students here at Brewster. So we have a lot of fun connecting with the students and the administration. So. Uh, hi, I'm Grace Tathados. I'm a junior at First High School and I'm the Secretary of Democratic Congress. This is actually just my first year being a part of this, but already we've done so much. Like we talked uh, to different schools about leadership at a conference. We are like planning all these events like to promote inclusivity and like school spirit and things like that. And we have already started like making a change for what like students and administration. Hi, um, I'm Ellie Keefe. I am a senior and I'm the treasurer of DEMO. It is also my first year, but I feel like I'm also involved in a, many other clubs in the school. I do sports. I'm an NHS, so like I feel like this is just one of our many clubs. Like It kind of interacts with all of them and does a great job in including everyone in the school. Hi, my name is Danielle Sullivan. I'm the assistant principal at Brewster High School, and I'm very honored to be here with our student leaders today. Uh, we are in the middle of Spirit Week here at Brewster <laughs> High School. We're getting ready for homecoming. So our theme today is Western and um, Outer Space Aliens. Um, so um, these students really represent uh, the portrait of the Brewster graduate, which we, dis we really um, have established as a goal. We want students to leave Brewster High School with a set of skills that will prepare them to take on any challenge, adapt to any adversities they face, to think, to work together, um, to work in situations that are unfamiliar to them, and to work through a difficult situation and try and fail and look at the failure piece as part of the learning process. So I can't think of um, a better representation of students who are really working and practicing these skills here at Brewster High School uh, than this group of students here today. So I'm very happy to be here with all of you. Absolutely. And um, I'm interested in, you know, how, ch how our students, I mean, you're actually our clients more than, you know, anything. Like, we are, we're here to serve you. And you don't probably see it that way, but that, this whole system is organized around you. You didn't know that, right? <laughs> it's all about you. And, and, you know, in and, 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 and the spirit of that, um, I think it's important as superintendent of the school district to be able to ask or find that, the, you know, find a way to ask you, like, how are you, you know, experiencing the success skills that, you know, we've been focused on as a school district since they were adopted by the Board of Education in uh, March of 2016. And, and the skills are, are, are not uh, dissimilar from other skills. So if you, any, regardless of the school district, you know, you more than likely would encounter critical thinking, you know, because it's so important, you know, to, you know, uh, uh, to have students uh, think about their own, you know, thinking and have them, you know, be able to analyze, you know, problems and, you know, uh, 
determine, you know, not only analyze problems, but to identify problems and to, uh, you know, in, in the process, uh, solve them, be creative, innovate, change, improve, uh, to apply those skills that you're learning in all of your content areas to real life situations. Um, another important skill that you'll see all around, everywhere, and, I, and I, what I've read recently is this is probably one of the most important ones to employers, collaboration and communication. Uh, you're going to have to work with so many different people. It's, it's, no, it's no longer um, uh, common for you to work alone. You know, it's no longer common for you to work in like a you know cubicle somewhere where you were like in your little box. You put you know, push pins on your little like walls, and, and that would be your little space. You won't be able to survive and function in that environment because we are in a very interconnected world where, in collaboration, I might need to, to something from you to do my job. So it may not necessarily be all team related work and the, and the definition of team may not necessarily be we're all together all the time, but it may, be, it may mean that I know where to go to, to find you to get this piece of information that I need to do my job. Um, another important skill, adaptability. I mean, in an in a, like, ever-changing world, right, where things are like, what are we on now, like iPhone 11 or 12? <laughs> I, I barely, I just got the 10, not 10, eight, eight. I just got the eight. I don't know how to, I don't even know half of the things on the thing. But that's how rapidly, you know, technology is changing. So the ability to be able to, you know, to tolerate, you know, to have the courage to, to accept, you know, things that you may not know about, you know, 100% you know, that, you, that you may be a little uncomfortable with and that you, but at the same time, you know, you see that, you know, it's okay to fail. You know, failure is an opportunity to learn. Failure is a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, being able to persevere, you know, work through, have the stamina to, to, to overcome, you know, uh, uh, difficulties and see that as sort of like, you know, that's how, you know, effort, your effort is the, it is the fuel that, that, that propels you forward. And that, that's at the essence of, of perseverance. And then civic responsibility. We are, we're all in a community of some sort. And, you know, you have to contribute to that. So it's not, it's not you know, it, you, it's, it's not um, a matter of you being able to say, you know what, I don't have anything to do with that. No. You are a member, and if you want it to make it better, you have to do something about it. So that's kind of like in a, you know, in a sort of very rough portrait, the skills that we value and that we want you to also be exposed to, because you're going to go into a world that's going to expect you to be able to, 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 to do those things. So tell me what your experiences are as students, you know, and, and, and how do you, expect, you know, what, what opportunities do you have to practice those things, any of those things that I described, in anything, whether it's, a, you know, athletic, you know, uh, team or a club, you know, demo congress, your classes? I'll jump in. Sure. Um, so one of those experiences I can speak for myself, um, last year, or the end of the follow the year before that, I ran for class president and I've actually never before that I never liked talking in front of crowds or in front of the classroom at all. Um, I was always nervous, my face would get red. And something one day somebody was walking around with the form and I just said I want to do that and the school gave me that opportunity and I was able to write my speech and I remember being so excited that morning and even though I was so nervous I got up and I did it. And ever since I've never been nervous to talk in front of crowds and I love to do that and it's helped me to join clubs like these and to talk to um, large amounts of people at once and you know just interacting with people instead of me being quiet I'm more open to talk to people I don't know and get to know people that I've never met before so that's a great example uh, one thing that I, I have to give credit to my physics teacher for this is that like, I'm taking AP Physics 2 right now, and it's hard. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. And she t told us today, we had this quiz, and we all did horrible on it. And she told us, like, you guys have to learn to be okay with working hard for your 80. Like, I know you're so used to going into a class and getting hundreds and 95s over and over. But, like, you have to, like, persevere to get a grade that you might not be, like, completely satisfied with. And I think it's taught, like... I think one of the things she teaches us the most is like working on your own like she's not gonna like like feed it to you like you know mm -hmm. and we have to just take the resources that we have we have to work with each other we have to study and we have to put in like that extra time and effort to do well in that class and I think it's taught us like just how we're so used to going from these classes and doing so well and honestly a lot of kids I don't think even 
put in so much effort and they still do well and now we have to like adapt to a really hard course that we're doing our best and I think that's one of the skills she's teaching us at the moment mm -hmm. that I found really like is gonna help yes, later for example. sure. Um, I also feel that um, implementing the Chromebooks in the classroom like really allowed us to kind of uh, utilize the technology so it's not purely just trying to learn fact and cold hard numbers but we um, if we need to know information we can research it we can learn like what avenues we have to go to find information whether it be talking to someone googling it coming to the library and we're also encouraged to like think kind of beyond like the traditional classroom setting like kind of question the information you're told like is this true maybe I'll go and look it up maybe there's some information that I'm not getting in school and I think the Chromebook really allows you to kind of go beyond the classroom and become more worldly and even nationally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Along the technology route, I think we've learned a lot about also adaptability um, and teamwork. Where we've had almost every meeting last year, we had one of the points in the agenda with the administration would be how can we make announcements more efficient because. I think it's a sign of a great school that we have so many announcements because we would talk about the clubs and um, a lot of athletic announcements. Um, all good news, but it would get to a point where it just would go on for minutes and minutes and minutes, which would detract from class time. So we had to work to come up with a solution and it involved the entire student body, checking their emails, it involved Democratic Congress, finding a way to advertise. So now we have um, a Google Classroom run by Democratic Congress and a Google Classroom run by the main office um, publishing announcements and it's um, just been really interesting seeing the move from listening and then reading and going onto your computer, checking your email every day, which is something that um, 10 or even 5 years ago high school students wouldn't be doing every day and it's, um, although that wasn't the purpose of changing the announcements, it's a good school skill to learn. Mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. And we had to work with a lot of people to get there. Right, right. Well, and, and, and um, I think certainly uh, it sounds like you know uh, you, you you had to adapt to that. I mean, you had to you know uh, be uncomfortable in that situation and, and work through it, and you know and, and 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 understand that you know what the the world is changing, and you know sometimes you know things that you know you would not think you would have to do are you know turn out to be more effective and efficient. Um, how are your experiences here preparing you for what you anticipate to be uh, what you're going to encounter in college? Um, I feel, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like um, it's much more realistic than I feel like it used to be. Um, just even the email example, like that's what we're going to be doing every day. We're not going to get things told directly to us. We have to go to a, somewhere and find the information for ourselves. We have exactly. to communicate with teachers and ask questions and things like that. And I think. Like emailing is a really good example. Like you can have that back and forth. You can seek knowledge and stuff like that. Um, I would definitely hit on the word flexibility. Um, we, as a team, have learned to become flexible. Um, so last year we actually ran a convention on diversity, and that there's been um, there's you know lots of diversity in our school and a language barrier, and you have to learn to become flexible and. Um, working with others when it's not the easiest thing um, and that was great and we had a great turnout and so many students came because it was so useful for them um, and after that I really it opened my eyes to see you know who's around me being flexible working with others that I'm not used to working with so that's great and that's definitely something that I'll encounter in college and you, bet you, will. you never know who's going to be in your class and whether it's going to be 18 students or 300 students exactly. and if you're working alone or if you have to work with all 300 mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. absolutely a lot of the teachers I've had have done just a really great job of um, a really good balance between giving out the information in forms of resources instead of spoon feeding mm -hmm. so um, it, I've had teachers I have like three this year who give out three different forms of information, whether it be video or notes or a slideshow. Um, and all of the resources are used by different students, and but they're not sitting there with you telling you exactly what you need to know, because that's just not, not how you're going to learn everything in the world. And I think that's been really helpful. And the Brewster students, Brewster teachers, do a great job at making themselves available for learning. And if you want to get a good education, you're going to get a fantastic one. That's marvelous. And I, I think, sorry, I think for sure that um, 
a lot of the teachers as well. I think when we were younger, even maybe like our middle school years, even ninth grade, really like they teach you in a way and it's like, oh, okay, like this is on the board and then like you're gonna do a sheet and like whatever. And then now it's more so, here's what you need to know here's I'm going to help you out but whatever works best for you whether that's talking to people in a group whether that's studying on your own you have more of that choice of what is going to help you learn the most and then you take your test to see how you do and whatever and it, I think that the teachers do like they're so willing to be like okay if that's going to work better for you I'll stay after you with this on this day and if it's going to work better for you for me to give you videos I'll do that and I think they do the job. That's great. That's great. Is there anything that you wished, um, you know, you have some months now before June, that you wished you could experience that, that would also, you know, um, further prepare you to be, you know, to, to, to use these success skills, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, in, you know, a, a job that you're, you would get, you know, in college or before college or, you know, uh, what you're doing in college or, you know, if you choose the military or, you know, you never know where life leads you. Is there something else that, that we could have provided that would just, you know, further enhance, you know, what you're doing and better prepare you for, for life after high school? I think that um, there's a few tutoring programs at Fisher High School. There's a math one and a science one, and at times they've tried to have a English one. Um, however, I think that the tutoring programs, there aren't resources available for the tutors, not for the students. And I think that um, that way of learning how to teach others would be absolutely fundamental to our learning process. So you're saying, would it be an online tutoring program or would you need, are you interested in someone um, providing the tutoring in, 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 in other content areas? Like which of those, I mean, or something yeah. else? Well, whether it be like an online course situation or whether it be in order to be a tutor, you have to attend this seminar gotcha. in the ILC, mm -hmm. um, which is perfect for seminar. Mm -hmm. so we've had quite a time here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that could be really beneficial to people who are learning from the tutors as well. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Great idea. Um, something I just wanted to say and add in there is that it's hard for me to answer that question because, as it might seem, um, or not seem, that everyone has a completely different experience from one another in high school and. For me, I feel that I'm completely, you know, prepared for what I think college is going to be like and what I think I'm going to be going through. But it's very easy for a student to attend Bruce High School or any high school for four years and come to school every day and not really say much and do well and graduate just fine. And for me, that just wouldn't, you know, suit me. I love to talk to people and I love to be involved in all these different clubs and, you know, try our best to make a difference. So, you know, it, it's different the opportunities that we come about and the things that we learn. So it's hard for me to answer that question for everybody, sure. only myself, you sure. know. That's, that's great. Um, I also feel like like working to foster like our sense of communication with one another because like me, I learned to like talk to people through clubs and through like involving myself in different activities. But I feel like for someone who wasn't necessarily engaged, they would not have these skills and would not be able to like express themselves in a way that is necessary in the real world. So I don't know, maybe implementing something like that more into the classroom is my only kind of critique. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's a great point. Yeah, I do think it is hard if you're not super involved. And sometimes I feel like, oh, like it's it's too late. Like I can't do this now. I can't. Like if you're like a junior, like oh, like is it worth it? Like to join this club and do that. And I think that a lot of kids do come to school and just take their classes, mm -hmm. and that's it. And like you can tell them as many times as you want, like get involved, mm -hmm. but like. I think that having maybe even just like a class, I, I think there might be a class like this, like a communications class, mm -hmm. but um, having a class where you learn not so much presenting, but more like being able to like back up a point that you have or being able to express yourself and not worry so much about what other people say would be something that I feel like kids, if they could take it like in their school day, would be a lot more willing to do that. Mm -hmm. than, put themselves fully out there. Sure. To sure. piggyback on that, um, although of course it's hard, like not all students can be enrolled in one class, but me and Julia last year were in a class called Leadership Class um, that a Mrs. O'Sullivan had taught. And I saw students who I'd never spoken to before, people who were really shy, and it was really tough to bring them out of their shells to 
really just go out there and to plan an event that would help other people just make other things fun and a huge emphasis on being a part of your community and civic engagement and that class taught a lot of people who I now see of course a lot of other things could have been going on in their life but people who just seem to be a lot more outgoing and more involved in their community this year after that amazing class. That's awesome. Yeah and I think that when we have like kids like you guys who took that leadership class maybe like the kids who take the leadership class that are really outgoing and really like want to lead and stuff can also help so many other kids because it's like sometimes if we like just talking to someone or like complimenting them can like make their day and then like they'll compliment someone else and like I think that we have so much of an effect that we don't even think about daily like I know someone who I didn't normally talk to came up to me and was like oh like hi I'd be like hi you know and I think that like having like kids that are leaders to just to even just talk to someone like once they can like change how they perceive other people and can change the school environment. Absolutely. No, I think that's that's really so important. And last year I had an opportunity to. Um, it wasn't fully successful. I think I, I got to uh, maybe ninety uh, seniors that I attempted. I attempted to interview the whole class. How ambitious was I? <laughs> it didn't work. But what I learned from the ninety or so that I did interview, one of the things that they said they wish they could have done more of. As a, as a student in high school was to participate in new clubs. That they saw the value of that and, and knew that they missed, they had missed out on that. And for some of them, I talked, I started talking to them around, you know, October and, and maybe I caught my last group around February or so. Uh, and over and over, that was the theme, you know, shared that there was a need, you know, that they felt that they, they, you know, they spent so much time, you know, just thinking about their classes and they wish they could have done that. So, uh, and I, I'm, I actually have a different format for talking to seniors this coming year. So it'll be more like a focus group that can catch you before you're, you go into classes uh, at the beginning of the of the day. Hopefully that works out because I, again, that's another important way for you know for us to know uh, as we think about you know the whole experience for students um, in the school district, uh, how we can make it better and improve and and prepare you for you know a, a world that's going to continue to change and pace of that change is going to continue to, to, to expedite. Um, and we talk about that all the time, Mrs. Hull, Mrs. Sullivan. And we go out and learn too, you know, over the summer. And Mrs. Sullivan can talk to you about a trip that we took. So we went to IBM uh, in our month, IBM Watson. And it was, it, IBM has completely changed their entire face in terms of what you think of when you they do so much um, in philanthropic work. They do so much on corporate communication. Everything there that you see, you see evidence of pro-social skills in work, at work. Um, and you can also see that it's very much supported there, but they expect you to come there with those skills in place. They will support you with, you know, to help you develop those skills and they will provide the environment for to foster those skills. But to, to get there, you have to show that you have those skills. And the, the workspace made us actually very proud to know that our ILC is so much like the way that, that it was designed. There were a lot of different places to work, to kind of take a work break. Um, and one of the things that you're expected to do is to be able to self-regulate when you were ready to work and you say, okay, I need to step back for a moment. Every place there was a place to collaborate. There were dry erase boards everywhere with amazing teamwork. Um, and it ranged from engineering to business calc <laughs> to um, marketing strategies to actual social contracts and expectations that the, the employees um, needed to make sure that they um, emphasize and practice while they were in there. And it really gave us a great picture of what we want to see our students gain as they go through the Brewster, the Brewster school system. That was our field trip. So all of the administrators went on that field trip. And the previous year we went to a similar, in a similar company called Unilever. Unilever makes, you know, there's not a single household on the planet that doesn't have a product made by Unilever. Dove soap, um, 
all kinds of like you know, cereals and you know, uh, personal care products are, and they're distributed all over the world. And uh, uh, one of our parents uh, works there, and um, we, you know, we asked, you know, could we, you know, could we, could we come there for, you know, I, you know, we don't want to spend all, you know, we don't want to take all of your time, but just for a little bit of time, because it's it's strange to me that if we talk about preparing you for life, work, and future learning. Why wouldn't we want to go out and see like what a work world would look like? Like what would an average, you know, not that everyone would work at IBM, not that everyone would work at Unilever, but how could we possibly know, right, if we don't go out and see for ourselves? And so that was what we did on, on the two field trips. And that was so eye-opening. And as Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Sullivan said, the workspaces look a lot like this. We were blown away, blown away. And at IBM, they had, I mean, at each, each place they had uh, uh, refreshment centers um, where you could, like in the middle of every like floor, all kinds of spaces to sit privately or in groups, furniture that moved, uh, booths, walls that moved, you know, little quiet places to have a conversation. What they didn't have were like divisions. So if you were uncomfortable in a collaborative environment, you wouldn't survive there. And, and there was another component that was evident in both places, which we do a great job. Right? And that's the civic responsibility, the civic mindedness, the, the outreach piece. Um, it is a very big piece of both of those companies, um, their, their purpose, their philosophy, to make sure that their employees give back and that they don't do things just for personal gains, that it's really um, an altruistic global perspective and at Brewster High School I see that every day with our students our clubs and organizations. Um, this student body is very civic minded and you practice that and impart that on the future students coming up every single day. Uh, I agree that I one thing that I really like about our school is that a lot of I find that like a lot of kids care a lot about the world that they live in. Like it goes so much more outside the school. Like if you ask anyone like, are you gonna vote when you're older? Yeah. Yeah. Like are you gonna do this or like do you care about what's going on in the environment? Almost every single kid would be like, Yeah, like I, I care. Which I think is something that like I don't know where we all got it from, <laughs> probably our schools, <laughs> but um, that I really like that we all think about. And that's such an important point. Um I, I, just recently, I read you know, that, that, that your generation, and I think you're, you're considered a post millennials, there was this thinking that you were going to be self centered. You know, that you're, like, you're, you, all, all, you, know, you have only lived in the digital world. You have not, you did not live with a phone that was attached to the wall, right? Where you had to put your finger in something, dial it, or punch it. You don't. You you are you are the only generation that's been has, has has grown up in a completely digital environment, and so the 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 theory was that you wouldn't be comfortable talking to other people, or you you wouldn't be interested in you know doing anything that didn't benefit you you, and universally that's been disproven. That you're the generation that's going to that you could that you could conceivably you know truly be the like you know the best generation, you know, uh, and the generation that would, that's going to produce a lot of change. That's what I've been reading. And I think I've seen, I, I think that we're on to something. I think that that's going to happen. I think that you are going to define the next, you know, this next century. I, sorry, I agree with you on that um, because in this school we've been given, you know, so many opportunities, but it's split between, you know, really getting to know technology, working with technology, and how we can improve it and use that in the future, but also stepping away from technology and, you know, the whole collaboration and being able to work in groups and, you know, be creative. And on a fun point, you know, we're all, you know, in AP classes and honor classes or even just regular classes, yet we still have that fun of dressing up every day. And, you know, you see kids all around the hallway taking pictures and we have Spirit Week decorating the hallways and homecoming. So we've all kind of found that balance of fun and schoolwork and, you know, home life and extracurriculars and work. And, you know, I think that this generation has been pushed um, very far in, 
you know, being able to stretch ourselves in so many different directions and, you know, work on so many different things at once. Mm -hmm. And it's unlike any other generation. And I truly believe that we can do something I agree. amazing. <laughs> I agree. I think that without the amount of direction and guidance we've gotten from the school, I can easily see us being very lost because it's yeah. been, we have this thing in our pockets that we can do so much with. Yes. Um, and it's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the school has given us a lot of resources, a lot of teachers mm -hmm. just um, helping out just how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the teachers have very strict rules about where they want your phone to be, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that they're not going to use technology as a resource for the class and teach you how to use it. I know a lot of my peers, um, probably everyone here, we're aware of what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. um, not really because we have time to sit down and watch the news or listen to the radio, mm -hmm. but um, there's a, we care and we, there's, we know how to get access to a lot of information as social studies classes have taught us, mm -hmm. high school and middle school. I also think we see the benefit in like collaboration with other people. Like we can talk to almost anyone in the world, like whenever we want to. Like we all have the same information. We're able to go, oh, did you see the election last night? Like of course you did, because you are surrounded by it. You're able to see it, and you're able to take those ideas and spread them. And just talk to people about them. And I think our teachers also will talk to us a lot of times about things. Like I remember in my name, my ninth grade, like like pre AP world history, we learned like all our material, whatever, and then every week Miss Holy would be like, okay, like what's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. Do you guys know? Do you guys know about this? Do you know about this? Like we're going to talk about global events because it's mm -hmm. important that you currently right now are thinking outside of this classroom mm -hmm. and outside of the history and thinking like the history that's happening mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. which I thought was really cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so awesome. I mean, you're so, you're all so impressive. And I'm not saying that because you're, you know, you're class leaders or you're in all the, you know, different classes. I think you do, you're a microcosm of the rest of the student body. You know, I think you, you really embody a lot of what we don't necessarily see because as I forget who said it, not every student is, you know, is able to balance or have, you know, be involved in, you know, lots of co-curriculars or clubs or, or, or so forth, but yet, and we don't know them. We don't have an opportunity to, to kind of have the same conversation with them. Um, and uh, I, what I, what I see you, what I see in you is what I, what I think we would see in a lot of students. Uh, and uh, I, I, I uh, I'm just honored to have had this time to talk to, to, to you. Um, any parting words? Any final thoughts? Since this is going to be on our website, and you're going to be like uh, stars. <laughs> I just did want to add one thing to what you just said is it's really hard to know you know all the students and you only get to talk to us and I have you know my best friend she's an introvert and she's very quiet and she's shy and she doesn't like to talk um, but I just wanted to say like kudos to the teachers because they do an excellent job at supporting every and any student whether they're an introvert or extrovert or they're in, in you know every club or in no clubs they do an excellent job at supporting you know what they want to do and how they want to graduate high school so that's awesome so but thank you so time. much Oops, at the one same time yeah. sorry <laughs> the teachers push them to do more not just accepting that you don't want to do that like go on do be uncomfortable like that's do what you don't want to do but it will, it will have a good impact that's great i think i want to say thank you to administration and to all yeah. the teachers for um providing the freedom to learn as well as the resources. Like yeah. the freedom to make mistakes, because mistakes are huge. We yeah. last year had one event that really did not go so well, but yeah. we're just trying we to get it. learned from that. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Exactly. Um, and I think that that's really special, that freedom to learn with so many resources, which has provided a lot of people with an excellent education. Yeah. That's I love my school. <laughs> I love my school. That's so awesome. Thank you so much Thank again you. for you know, spending the, uh, you. a little bit of your valuable time, because I know you have a lot of things to do uh, with us, so that, again, we can um, showcase um, not only you know, who our students are, you know, and this is just a sample of them, but that you know, we have uh, 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 our aspirations is for, our, is for our students to have the experience that they can go out after they graduate and be very successful in life, work, and future learning, doing this, whatever they would like to do, whatever their passion is, that we hope we prepared you for that. Thank you.